everyone welcome back to rts and welcome back to another organizing video yes so rts today is rearrange the stuff yes so today we're talking about organizing chipboard in the way that i have my color binders and it was a question i got asked many many times and i have showed it in my process videos and people were like could you show how you do that yes now i want to say in this week of our summer space shape up which there's a playlist for that we are on week 10 of our summer space shape up so you can hop over and check that out now we were talking about stickers and chipboard and so there is a lot of thought process and talking about stickers and chipboard and how and the why and this and that. There's no answer for everyone. And so for me personally, I do not have all of my stickers and all of my chipboard and all of my die cuts organized in the same manner. It's just not the way I scrap, but I do have a majority in binders. And so that's what I'm going to show today. Now, with that being said, this is not something for everyone. And so that's okay. It's just to maybe you'll spark an idea for something else you want to do in your space. Okay. So also too, there's another video talking about stickers and how I came about this whole binder system for my stickers, die cuts, and chipboard. And so I won't go into that in this video. So if you want to hop over to organizing the stickers in the binder, that will be a little bit more detailed. Okay. As to why I ended up doing this. Okay. But basically... Why I ended up doing this is because, along with my stickers, when I sit down to scrap, I didn't want to have to pull out 85 different packages to get what I wanted for my scrapbooking layouts. And I do a lot of mood and feel, and I don't do a lot of theme. Now, if I was sitting down and doing a travel page, just simply pulling this out works good, but that's not primarily how I scrap. I scrap some theme, some manufacturer, some collection, but primarily by color henceforth why I did color binders. So this is what I'm going to talk about. If you have any questions or, you know, things like that, just put it in the comment section below. And I'm sure my lovely subscribers will also answer because they are full of ideas. Now, when I'm talking chipboard, well, let me, I'm getting the cart before the horse. So in my color binders, and again, I had talked about this in the sticker video but I'll talk about it here I have 12 color binders and I will have them listed below there is a couple colors I have combined together because I don't have just as much of them so why take up the space now my binders and I will pull out my pink one because that's the color I use most of is pink and isn't that funny how some of us use one color more than the other I will tell you the color I have least amount of is yellow and orange and I love those colors it's just hard to come by and navy I mean a true navy it's hard to come by why did I go there I don't know I just love color okay so in my color binders I have my stickers and that is ending here okay, and I went over that in the previous video and then I have die cuts of which that'll be next week and then I have chipboard okay now every one of my color binders is set up the exact same way so I know exactly where to go for what, okay? And then if you look, I should have showed this. I have the color represented on the actual binder. So quick reference, of course. And at the end of the video, I will show a picture of my binders on my shelf in my scrap space so you can just get a visual, okay? So chipboard, lovely chipboard, okay? Now, if you notice, because you probably just watched the sticker video, the stickers are not, you know, they're not in page protectors because you don't need to because you want to rip off of them really quickly. But with my, and again, die cuts will be next week. With chipboard, if they're all in page protectors and you're like, why? And I know, I wish I wouldn't have had to put them in page protectors because I think getting things in and out of page protectors is like running your fingers across a chalkboard. I do not like to do it but you have to because of the weight of chipboard. It will fall off, <laughs> maybe, sometimes, maybe, not a lot, but why, why take the risk? Because I have done this for several years now. And so, of course, it all started with stickers and you can go see that video as to how it all started. But when I first started it, I didn't put them in 
page protectors, you know, as I was working on them, and the, some of them would pop up. I'm like, well, now how is that going to work when you're flipping through these binders? Okay, so your chipboard has to be in page protectors. They just, it's because of the weight. They're not going to withstand flipping back and forth. No. Okay, so what do you do? Okay, simply is you're going to take eight and a half by 11 cardstock, you know, just a regular cardstock. Of course, I buy it in bulk at Sam's Club. No correction. My husband buys it for me in bulk at Sam's Club. And also, in the beginning of my channel, there will be a video, and I'll try to link it below, that there is now Nina cardstock in bulk at Sam's Club. Yes. Now, someone had told me that's not the solar white that some people use don't matter to me I love it it's a great price I'm gonna use it okay so eight and a half by eleven cardstock not copy paper okay and I'll move this just for a minute I think what I'll do is I'll pull one of these out of here so that way we have a reference okay chipboard love chipboard instant dimension now I will tell you I've been scrapbooking a long time and so when you're using chipboard whether you're taking it off sheets that you're making here if you decide to go this again this is not for everybody okay don't throw any shade my way <laughs> this is how i do it okay whether you're using it from this or you know something here you have to you take the step and go ahead and put adhesive on the back of your chipboard however you use it either from the manufacturer transfer or whatever even if it's loose okay you need to okay and this is layered chipboard and then I also, in that category, if I just had it, I consider these pieces, they're, they're cork, but I consider that chipboard. What do they call it? Oh, cork stickers. I consider that chipboard. Okay. So you can, however you want to consider chipboard. It's a layered anything. So you're going to take your 8.5 by 11 cardstock, but this isn't an 8.5 by 11 sheet. As you can see, this is an 8 by 11 and you'd say, okay, well, why would you cut that off? Because in the sticker section, you know, I had to make a, a place for my three ring, you know, my holes. Well, I don't need that for the uh, chipboard, so why am I doing that? Well, learn from my mistake. In the beginning, when I first did this, and this was years ago, I put this 8.5 by 11 cardstock right in with the page protector. Of course, I have my, my wax paper on here, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. And then when I went to put in my page protector, the chipboard added too much bulk, and I had trouble getting this in and out of the page protector. Now, that will not work for me, so I thought, oh, you're going to have to cut that down to accommodate for the bulkiness of the chipboard, and I'll show you why in a minute. Otherwise, it's going to be, you're going to be fighting it to get it in and out. So you're going to take your 8.5 by 11 cardstock, and you're just going to cut it down to 8 by 11. And again, I'll have that measurement listed below. So you're just cutting off a half inch on one side. That's all you're going to do. You're going to cut it 8 by 11, okay? And then, and of course, I go into more detail about the different process of this. So if you want to watch that, hop over. And then we're going to use wax paper, okay? Now, why do we use wax paper? Because when you take it off the wax paper... Okay, you can, see, you just pull it and stick it back on. Love this. Yes, I love ice cream. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to talk about some of that in just a minute. About, I'm just talking about how to do the pages. Okay, and again, if you want more details, go watch that sticker video. And so then we're going to cut the wax paper, and I will say that in this video. I recommend Reynolds wax paper. Some people have told me they've used like a dot you know a store brand or a dollar tree brand and they maybe not had the best success with it so i'm just going to recommend right off the bat reynolds wax paper that's what i've used from the very very beginning and also this tombow aqua in the blue those are the two things i have used from the very beginning and i continue to use i have not had a single problem with any of it okay so you know why not if i've had luck with it go ahead and try it okay you don't have to but some people said they ran into problems with that you know so I have my wax paper cut down to a little less than an 8 and a little less than 11 okay so you can just maybe go where from like 7 and 3 fourths to 8 and 10 and 3 fourths by 11 and it doesn't have to be exact science because this is not Pinterest worthy no we're just gonna cut that down and we want to maximize the most of this space because we don't have to accommodate for that three ring hole that we had to for the stickers okay so that is my wax paper okay and I'm gonna show how to cut that wax paper because there's a little bit of a trick because you don't want to waste it so I have my trimmer here 
Now, I'm left-handed, so for some of you, this trimmer will be upside down. Roll with the punches. Go with me. And if this is something you want to do, I suggest having two of these to begin with and two of these to begin with because even if you don't use all the wax paper, you can use it in the kitchen. If you don't use all this, you can use it in your scrap space, okay? But you're gonna use more than you think, okay? So I take my roll and I let my roll actually rest against the edge of my trimmer, okay? That's the best way to get, I just had things shifting, that's the best way to get an even cut more often. So we are going to roll this, just like you would a roll of uh, wrapping paper, a little less than eight, okay? And it doesn't have to be exact. And I suggest do more than one at a time. And I was saying in another video, the more things you can do in batch processing, the more efficient your time is, absolutely. So I'm just trimming that. And again, it doesn't have to be exact signs. Some of these, when you go to put them on your car stuff, you may see that they're not exactly straight. Yes, it doesn't matter. This is just for to house it. It's not to look pretty, okay? So that's what I do. Then you can put that away. After you do as many as you want, you might want to do 12, 20, 50. It's up to you. <laughs> yes. Now I said this in the sticker video. If this is not something you're sure about, then don't do it. Think about it a little bit more before you go gun ho on something and then you realize you don't like it. Now for my chipboard, I have organized by color, but I'll show another way of once we, once we learn how to do the base pages there, I'll show another way that you can do your chipboard. It doesn't have to be all by color. Okay, so then I have these cut and so now I'm gonna cut length longwise and I'm gonna cut them a little less than 11, just a sliver. And so this is how much from each cut you have as a waste. And that's just the way it is. Because you want, you don't want to have to cut, you might as well cut them on the trimmer rather than have to cut them from your cardstock. You know, you don't want to have to cut that overhang. You might as well do it on the trimmer, it's easier. So you see what I'm doing? I'm just putting it in here long ways and I'm cutting a little less than 11. And I'm not sure if that's in frame, but you get the idea. And I'm going to show you how we're going to make these pages to actually put our chipboard on. Yes. Okay. But there was some more information in this sticker video. I don't want to make everything an hour long. <laughs> People would say, could you just stop talking so much? Yes. Okay. But it's scrapbooking. It's organizing. You put them both together. Oh, that's a party. Okay. So then what we're going to do if you look here, all I have is a piece of cardstock and I have wax paper, chipboard, flip over, wax paper and chipboard. And that's exactly what we're going to construct. Okay. So I have my piece of cardstock here and I have my Tombow liquid glue aqua in the blue, not the green, the blue. And I'm simply going to take this glue and I don't go straight to the edges. I go just near the edges and I go around the perimeter and then I do squiggly. <laughs> Yeah, no exact science there, is there? No. And we're going to flip it over. And then what I try to do is get in the bottom corner. And like I said, it doesn't always match up. And I even cut things down a sliver. You see how you can cut something ten times and it's never the same. <laughs> see? It's just the way it goes. But I like this Tombow because it gives you a little bit of wiggle room. Okay? Now if you have this tiny little bit of overhang here, don't worry about it. Oh. Okay, so you flip it over. See how easy that was? Seconds, literally seconds to do that. Now, some people say, is there a right or wrong way to use wax paper? I have never gave that a thought. Never a concern. Just ever which way it goes, it goes. I mean, I don't know. I think there was a debate one time. Is there a right way and a wrong way to wax paper? Now, see, I, that's probably something I'll go look up because I would have to know these trivia things. I love trivia. Okay, so there we go. That is how quick that is. Okay, now, if you take your fingernail, you can feel wax on that, and you can feel wax on that. So, I don't know. Somebody, if you know for a fact, is there a wax side and a non-wax side? I don't know. It doesn't say anything. Who, who knows? You know, I love to learn things like that. Okay, so we'll do that again. We'll take another piece of paper 
I want to make sure I got the right size because I got a little bit of everything floating around because I was just doing the sticker video and I don't want to have the wrong measurements, but I'll have things listed below. And I'll also list below my color, uh, you know, the color, the rainbow color that I use for my binders. I have 12 of them on my shelf. And like I said, I have a couple colors combined. And I just have the colors represented on the outside. See, I didn't get that on exactly. And that mono gives you a little bit of, see how I'm just sliding that? It gives you a little bit of wiggle room that other liquid adhesives just don't. No. Of course, you know, if I wasn't talking. <laughs> so I just start from the bottom, work my way up. And if you get a bubble, no fuss, no muss. Even have a wrinkle. No concern. <coughs> I might have to get a drink. Oh, Lord. <coughs> I'm sorry about that. I think I need to do a little less talking. Okay, so I am simply going around the perimeter, giving some squigglies in the middle. Not an exact science. No. Not an exact science. And putting that on, I start at the bottom, work my way up. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. That's how quick it is. Okay. Now, there's no holes over here you need to worry about. Now, this is what it looks like when it's wet. It's still a little bit pliable. But when they're dry, and I don't know. Let me pull out my pink one. If I have any in here. Yes, right here. I have one. This is what it's going to look like when it's dry. It's all wrinkly like an old lady. It's okay. That's just the way it looks like. Okay? No big. Now, someone will probably ask me, can you use a glue stick? I do not know. <laughs> I have only ever used this. So, this is what I can recommend. I can't recommend anything else. But try it. See how it works. Okay? It doesn't hurt to try something. I wouldn't do it all that way. Just try it. Let, and then I let this dry overnight before I use them. It just helps things be a little bit more durable if you let that dry overnight. Okay? And again, do those in batches. Okay? So that is how you do it. Okay? And then I make a few of them up at a time. And you can see I had made some up for my stickers. See, these have the holes. Those are for my stickers. And I will put those in the back because then those can be used for chipboard. And I have even extra. Or right there was an extra one. See, it's already done. That's for my stickers. See how it's wrinkly. I'll pull it out. You probably can't see it. See how that's all wrinkly? It's not gonna look, it's not gonna look fabulous. But when you're gonna put chipboard on it, it doesn't matter. No. Okay. So this is the what it looks like when you put the chipboard on it. Okay. Now I'm gonna put this back in. And I'm gonna show a couple representations of what it looks like so there's pink chipboard and you can put different shades of pink like maybe you could put your baby pink in one one sheet your dark pink on another sheet now I did that when I first started out it's really not a big deal for me now because I use them so often and then this is what I wanted to show you don't have to do it just by color you can do it by collection or by theme if you want I do a little bit of everything so I have these this is Valentine's it's not all Valentine but I have them kind of grouped together see that's Valentine and see this is also Valentine but it's you know it's not pink okay I just decided to put that in pink because that's what I, I decided to. And then I also, I have coral here. You can certainly do it however you want to do it. Okay. You don't have to, you can just put all pink in one and then, you know, you could do it by theme and, or you could separate it by color hues. You could do light pink, dark pink, do your coral. Okay. Now let me get another color so you can see. And the reason I'm showing this is because a lot of people had asked and they've seen me pull it out in my process videos. Let's go to multi because I have some things I could talk about in that category. Okay. And again, die cuts will be up next week. That's a little bit. That's the more, I would say that's the most time consuming. I think that takes the most time is the die cuts. I would say yes. Okay. So in my, this is multi and I'm sorry, I should have showed that. I'm flipping back and forth. And I have a multicolor sticker to tell me that that's multicolor. You know, like a pie chart type thing. And of course, I have a lot in here. <laughs> okay. So you can put things in by collection 
or just multi-color. Okay, this is just multicolored chipboard. Now, this was some uh, Market Street. This was Bow Bunny, you know, crepe paper, and then you get into more crepe paper. I just have these kind of together, but just multi. It's it's nothing because this is. If you said where would you put that, I have no color. I have no idea what color I would put any of those in. No, but I will tell you, multicolors is a group I struggle with. I have to challenge myself, but it's a fun group to play with, okay? So that's multicolor. And again, I'll go over these die cuts next week. So each, with the stickers, the die cuts, and a chipboard, how you put them in the binder is different because they're different embellishments. They're different. Okay, what do I have? Now, I think this is white. I don't have a lot of white. What do I have? <laughs> A couple of little sheets. Let's see there I have some Heidi Swap. Okay. And then I have I have white and ivory together. And guess what? I don't have any ivory chipboard at all. There's none there. There's none there. Okay. And I will be right back. Okay, sorry about that. And so then in my ivory, I don't have any. No chipboard whatsoever interesting so this is one of those things that you can see what you have a lot of what you don't have a lot of and then when you go to purchase things like for me I know when I look at stickers die cuts and chipboard I'm thinking Lord I have 12 binders I do not need to buy anything I still do at times not this year you know I've been on a spending freeze but you know it does put a little bit in your mindset and this is my black that you know you have plenty Okay, so again, my binders are set up the same way. I have stickers in the front, and then I go into die cuts, and then I go right to my chipboard. And it's easy to know where my chipboard is because they're in the page protectors. Again, I just have, just, you know, lovely, 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 lovely. Okay, and your page protectors, they don't have to be any of great, I wouldn't buy the cheap, cheap ones because you want them to hold up a little bit. But they don't have to be name brand or anything like that. No. And then, of course, there's my gold, and that's my... <laughs> my little pieces of gold chipboard but i wanted to say and i have some oh what happened to it oh my i wonder if i can find it i had it here there went my ipad there went my wax paper roll oh lord somehow my ipad i think i would cry but i had some chipboard here and if i could find it here it is now, when I'm done playing with the collection, you see this right here? This is my mind's eye, yes, please. When I'm done playing with this collection, I still have a few more layouts I'm working with. This is exactly where I would put this, okay? And so then what I would do is I would pull this out of the page protector. And of course, what do you have on there? You have wax paper, right? And so then what I would do is I would simply, and I'll go ahead and put a couple in here. I'll get these, what well, you can actually see what I'm doing. I'll do an X and an O. And so I would take off this transfer paper because they're sticky. And some people say, well, why would you go to the bother of doing this? If you scrap by color, this is not only fun, it's fabulous because you can see what you have as a, at an instant. Okay, but if you're someone who scraps by manufacturer collection, you know, maybe this wouldn't be something you want to do. Okay, so now like something like this, you could take off the whole piece or you could separate them out. So you could see that you would have two pieces. Okay, now I have plenty of space. Okay, because I would not use them together. So I'm just gonna stick them like that. Okay, and that's all you have to do. Now with chipboard, as I was doing these binders and with my chip chipboard, there were some manufacturers that were stickier <laughs> than others. Meaning when you took them off, it came, the chipboard would pop off. Let me get another piece. And this here wouldn't, it would be stuck to the packaging, okay? Or you would do it and there would be hardly any sticky there, or it would rip a couple layers off. So what you do in that case, and I should have pulled that. Okay, what I was talking about was that sometimes when you're dealing with chipboard, and you know how if you take it off those 12 by 12 sticker sheets, that sometimes, you know, you'll take the transfer paper off and it won't really be sticky or the glue will come off with the transfer paper 
or what will happen is you will actually, and I'll see if I can do this. There's transfer paper, and there's the layer with the adhesive. That actually comes off with it, okay? And you know what I'm talking about if you've used chipboard. This is what happens. And that's all chipboard really is, is layers and layers of this thin paper over and over and over again, pressed, and that's all it is, okay? So what happened is, because see, now I have nothing here. And if I put that there, well, that's not going to stay. So what you have to do is, and I had to research how I had to do this, is that you can use a product called Eileen Tackett over and over. And this is what the new bottle looks like, and this is what the old bottle looks like. Some of you may already have this, especially if you deal with rubber stamps. You probably already have this product in your inventory. And so then what you would do is you would take this tack it over, tack it over and over <laughs> product, and you can get it at Joey and some other, you know, other places. And it's just a wet, you don't need this much. I'm just showing you what it looks like. And you just put that there. Now what you do is you have to let that dry overnight. Maybe not overnight, but I do. Okay, and then this is what it's going to look like as it's drying, and then this is what it looks like when it is dry. It just looks like beads of glue. Okay, and then once that's dry, it becomes tacky. Get it? It becomes tacky again, and then you just use it as you would. I'll just put those there. That's so. And then you would just simply put it on your sheet. Okay, and so that again, that is Eileen Tack it over and over. Okay, and I will have that listed below. And I'll probably try to find a link on Amazon just so you could see. That's probably not where I would buy it. It might be cheaper at Joann's or Hobby Lobby Michaels with a coupon. Okay, but it's not that expensive and it's a good product and it really does work. So what I would do when I was doing this process and I ran across some that I had to do this, I wouldn't stop and do this process. I would wait till I got a few. I would just put them in a sandwich bag and then I would do all of this again in batch processing and then let them sit overnight and then I would put them in my binder once this became that, you can, you can see it's drying. Okay, that's just in a matter of an hour or so. Because yes, I've had to stop and start this video <laughs> several times. Okay, so that is that process right there. Okay, again, Eileen Tackett over and over. Now I'm gonna put this away. And so I wanted to show a couple more binders just to give you an idea. And again, every one of my color binders is set up the same way stickers die cuts chipboard same thing okay and like i said i have a couple colors that are combined because i did not need a binder for each color i just simply didn't have enough because you saw on the white and ivory i didn't really have a lot of that but i don't i don't want to not have it and so some of my binders are two inch and some of those ones that i don't have a lot of is a one and a half inch binder okay i wouldn't suggest going over a two inch binder because i did at one time my binders were three inches. Very heavy, very bulky. I had a lot in there, but it was so hard to work with. So I would not go over a two inch binder. That's just my recommendation. Okay, now this is brown. And so each one of my binders has the color represented. So of course I have them in rainbow system on my shelf, easy to find. And again, there's my stickers, okay? There's more stickers, okay? And then my die cuts and then chipboard. And what I wanted to say is as I was doing this, and I may have already said this, I might have said it in the sticker. When you're doing this, it's amazing when you start to realize, especially if you do it by color, or even really just by sticker, die cut, chipboard, you really start to realize what you have. I mean, I did not know I had so much brown chipboard. But then I also, I did not know I only had a little bit of white and no ivory chipboard and a little bit of gold. I would have not, I would have thought I had a lot more gold than I had brown. Oh, so you just don't know until you get it all together. Okay. Now with my brown, you can see on this front and this back, I'll take it out of the page protector so if there's not a glare. Again, what do I have? I have cardstock, this wax paper that was adhered by this mono. That's all that is. And then look. None of that's falling, no. And so this is fall slash autumn, and I just put that in a separate, on a separate sheet, okay? And then anytime I had anything that, you know, because this isn't all one manufacturer, most of it's Echo Park, but some of this isn't, some of it's crepe paper. And so then I just, or this is Pebbles, 
how would I know that? Don't even go there. Okay, this is Pebbles. I just put that in one category. So there's only a couple groups in my scrapbooking process that I do by theme, and that's uh, fall and Christmas and Valentine's. And um, well, yeah, that's about the only themes that I do. Okay, everything else is basically by color, but my fall, my Christmas, and my Valentine's. Is about the only thing on oh, school I keep that separate okay but if something fits in okay now I think I have turquoise down here okay and these binders came from Amazon I don't know if I said that in the sticker category uh, video and I'll have the link below because I think I got them in a set of four and I think maybe ten or eleven dollars not very expensive and they're quality they're really nice I wonder if there's a brand oh Amazon basics huh <laughs> yeah okay so again what do I have stickers and then die cuts and i'll talk about die cuts coming up and chipboard okay and so then that is how i have my chipboard absolutely so then when i want one what do i do i just pull it out okay say i wanted this flower pull that off okay and that so sometimes you get wax paper oh look right here that is the ones that had eileen tack it over and over see that okay and so that's what that will look like when that's dry it's just beads beads of glue strips of glue however and so with that Eileen tack over say okay why well, didn't want that flower well I'll just put it right back on there start all over yeah so you just pull them off put them back on okay it's and that's what I'm saying with the page protector even if they are not the stickiest because when you're putting scrap, uh, chipboard on a page or a card, you do need to put an extra layer of adhesive because they're just it just won't hold up. But in the page protector, if something does pop off, you're not going to lose it, okay? Because die cuts don't fall off and the stickers don't fall off, okay? So that's why you put the chipboard in page protectors, okay? I think that's all I have. If you have any questions, you know, list below. And again, turquoise, yes absolutely so fun to do now it does take time and i'll put something here so you don't just see my table okay it does take time to put chipboard on this okay so how i would do this process again in front of the tv in front of a movie that type of thing and then i would separate my chipboard by color and then i would do it this way i wouldn't like okay well let me just say if i had some chipboard here this chip we're here I wouldn't just take this off and put that in blue then I wouldn't take this off and put it in blue I would take all of these off and then say if you had 10 sheets of these I would take all your chipboard out of here and I'll just do it now see now sometimes those will pop off and right there the adhesive still on there okay sometimes you'll pop them off and the adhesive isn't so I would go ahead and do this whole process just like this okay now this is what I mean Oh, that one came off. But sometimes you'll take them and the transfer paper doesn't come off. Or sometimes the transfer paper will take the adhesive off. So I would punch all of these and get all of your adhesive or all of your chipboard loose. And I'd put it in piles and then I would put these in color piles and then I would work on them. And so what I would do, I had a bunch of them at one time. I separated by color. I put them in sandwich bags, sandwich baggies till I got to them. Yes, and just work on one color at a time because you do not want to see this is what I'm talking about. This is what happens because that's all a heat that's all sticky back there. Okay. And then I will just cut this down and this will go in my alphas. Okay. This is why I don't like keeping them in these 12 by 12 because if I put this in the collection, which I don't even have this collection, I have a couple pieces of paper then none of these pieces could have got used on a story that would have helped convey my mood and feel. That's exactly why I do this. So I would just pop all of these off. And if you're not sure, like I said, wait a little bit. Okay? Maybe just start with some stickers. Okay? Or when we do die cuts next week, maybe that's the category you could start with and see if you like it that way. Okay? And then just keep ripping. Okay, now see there's no transfer paper, so then... I don't want that sticking to something. So I'll rip a piece of this off. Okay, I'm just showing this. You know, everybody likes to see how you do things. I know I like seeing how people do things. 
I would punch all of these out. And again, then I would group these by color or your collection, however you want to do it. And then keep them separated in sandwich baggies until you have time to work on them. Okay. Because you're not going to have time to sit down and do this whole process in one sitting. It took me months, months. And every so often I still add things to my binder. That's the whole beauty of them. Okay. So I would finish that and then, you know, like I said. Okay. So I think that's all I have for organizing your chipboard in my, in the color binder system using the wax paper. If that's something you're interested in. If not, you know, I said in our summer space shape up chipboard may be one of those things you just put in a, a pretty decorative bin and you have it sitting on a shelf or do your stickers the same way. There is no right or wrong way. And chipboard comes in different sizes, mainly six by 12 and 12 by 12. So you have to make sure it accommodates for that. And then if you know, your stickers, they come in all different kinds of sizes. So, you know, it's just not a one size fits all. It would be nice, but it doesn't. So if you have any questions, list it below. And anything I talked about, I'll have the links below as well. And check out our other playlist uh, titled Rearrange the Stuff for other organizing videos. And come back next week for organizing die cuts that will be in the same binder system. Okay, that's all I have for now. Thank you for all the comments and the lovely encouragement. I appreciate it. And come back to RTS because... You never know what we're going to learn. Bye.